perhaps the best known and most widely used model for how groups develop into a team is that developed by Bruce Tuckman, the Tuckman model. So in this video, I'm going to explain how the Tuckman model works. The Tuckman model was developed in the 1960s by Bruce Tuckman and then further refined in collaboration with Mary Ann Jensen in the 1970s. It's a hugely influential model and by all accounts, my favorite model of team development. Tuckman said that the success of the model was almost certainly due to the fact that they chose rhyming words for the different stages of the model, which made it easy for people to remember. And whilst I think there is definitely something in that, I would also say that the Tuckman model is almost the perfect model in that it strikes the ideal balance between simplicity and sophistication. It is simple enough that we can easily understand it and memorize it. There aren't huge numbers of stages and components that make it complex to understand. But on the other hand, there is enough in it that it carries the sort of sophistication and subtlety that we need to explain a broad range of experiences and to accurately predict what will happen in many cases. Model building is difficult. Getting that balance between simplicity and sophistication is hard. But Tuckman has hit the nail on the head. So let's have a look at Tuckman's model, which some people call the Orming model. And you'll know why when you hear the names of the stages. And that first stage is the forming stage. The forming stage is when the team first comes together. At that stage, they are not a team. They're just a group of people who don't know one another or who may know one another a bit. So at this early stage, what people will do is try to get to know one another. They will ask each other simple questions. Their conversation will be at a superficial level. What they're trying to do is to get some measure of each other and to get a sense of where they have things in common. What the team will really want to do is to get on with some work. So your job in leading the team is to keep them active and in doing the work, they will start to get to know one another. But of course, once people start to get to know one another, personalities will start to emerge. At the early stages, we're kind of suppressing elements of our personality because we want to see how it fits in with other people. But as we feel more confident, our desire to fit in is exceeded by our desire to be true to ourselves. Some people, of course, will push for a dominant role within the group. They will try to assert themselves. Others will be less confident, less assertive, and will be looking for a niche. They'll be looking for allies with whom they can get on and also roles that they can feel comfortable in. You will find that this is the stage where people start to argue. They will argue with the tasks they are set. They will argue with the leadership they receive and they will argue with one another. This is the stage that Tuckman called the storming stage. It is intensely psychological. The team has moved from a very low level of confidence to enough confidence to assert itself. And yet still, they are not completely comfortable with the work that they need to do. But this intensely psychological emotional stage is draining on people and eventually they will settle down. People will start to feel that they've got a place in the group. And once they feel they've got a place in the group, they can retreat into getting their work done. So the next stage, which Tuckman called the norming stage, can be highly productive. What we tend to find in the norming stage is people settling down and getting on with their work. In the background, people are also trying to find ways of working with one another. The team will move towards a consensus of the kind of behaviors that work for it. 
And this is what psychologists call norming. They are finding norms of behavior, patterns of working, which work for the team. If your leadership is effective, then you can move the team on from the norming stage to the final stage of Tuckman's original model. And that's the performing stage. If people have found good ways to work with one another and they have started to build good relationships, then they can start to help one another. They can provide creative input, support in problem solving, guidance, support with difficulties as well. And that means the team will work as one. They will start to collaborate. They will be working on their shared goal together. And now the level of performance of the team will take a jump. If you've ever worked in a team where it has been a joy to be part of that team, even though the other members of the team may not be your best friends, you felt that you were achieving great things together. This is a team in the performing stage. It has achieved a high level of performance. And in Tuckman's original work, this was the end of the story. But in the 70s, working with Mary Ann Jensen, they re-examined the model. They confirmed that the forming, storming, norming and performing stages were still consistent with all the most current research. But they also identified that there was another stage. Because a team that has worked well together and performed well together and formed productive workplace social bonds that is then split up to go its separate ways will find that disruptive. They called this next stage the adjourning stage, the team adjourns. But many people like myself prefer the term mourning because Although it would be crass to think that a team splitting up is rather like a personal loss and a bereavement, the centers in our brain that cope with it are the same ones. They just cope with it at a lower level of intensity. And therefore, the right thing for the team to do when it splits up is to do the sort of things we do when we are mourning the loss of a loved one. We need to acknowledge that something valuable is being lost and celebrate what we had. If the team does not mourn, then the individuals may not comfortably move on to their next team role. Now, in the 1990s, I worked on a lot of teams on a lot of projects in different organizations. And I saw the Tuckman model play out. I saw the forming, storming, norming, performing and mourning stages all play out in my experience. However, I also observed that something else happens sometimes. The team would be working well. It would be in the performing stage. Then one or two people would leave. New people would come in. Or maybe the same team would be retasked from this job to another job. And strangely, this high performing team stop performing as well, at least for a while. I refer to this as the transforming stage. And it reminds us that we need to remember that when people from the team leave, when new people join the team, when the team has different work to do, it changes enough that the team may no longer be in the performing stage. It may slip back to a norming stage, finding new ways of working with the new people in the team or new ways of working together on the new task. If it's a big enough change, there may be arguments about the new roles that people have on the new task or filling gaps for people who have left. And those arguments can feel a lot like the storming stage. If the change is huge, then people won't really be sure where they sit within the team and what it's all about. And it might even feel like the forming stage all over again. So that's the basic Tuckman model. I wonder if you recognize it from your own experiences, because I certainly do from mine. We'll develop our thinking about this more as we go through the next modules in this course. But for now, the important thing to remember is that 
a team will storm. It will go through the forming, storming, norming and performing stages if led well. But even if it jumps straight from coming together to performing well under pressure to perform, after a while, the team will storm. When the pressure comes off, personalities will out and people will start to argue. So don't necessarily think that the cycle of forming, storming, norming and performing is a rigid one. The Tuckman model is a hugely flexible model. And it's one that I believe every manager should know, should understand and be able to call to mind when they are working with a group that needs to develop into a team. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come. So please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, Keep learning.